بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah dear viewers welcome to youth hour my name is Isaacuddin and I want to welcome you all to youth hour actually we have amazing panelists for you tonight but let me tell you about the topic we're going to talk about today is community engagement um, the reason is actually we can see or we can hear the headlines around the uh, um, local papers and of course national and international that we are somehow the communities are breaking down especially our young people are not connected with the families anymore um, before I go to the topic, I'm going to ask you to please, if you want to take a part, you can call in and share your view too. So if I could introduce our viewer, especially our panelists, inshallah, first, I'm going to say is the student, uh, PhD student actually, Jonathan Smith, welcome to our show. Thank you, sir. Fantastic. And then we have uh, Salvation Army Officer, Wendy Watkin, welcome to our show. Hi, thank you. I'm glad you made the time for us. It's good to be here. Fantastic. And then we have Anna Mary, welcome to our show. Thank you, Ishak. Um, how do you find it today, the topic, um, community engagement? Does it give the bells or do you think? It's a hard thing to do in London because um, I think we're quite isolated as different people, but it's so important to look out for each other, I believe. Brilliant. You know, we, we get the headlines like uh, recently, like um, acid attacks, stabbings, especially young people are involved in these things and, and we have a long holiday about well, six weeks seven weeks some places and drinking too why do you think is the issue i mean especially uh, uh, around where we live it, it, it's, it's sad to see why do you think is that yeah well the, i mean it's it is really sad i mean i i think all of us who live here are are concerned when we read the stories in the media and also have um friends of friends or friends even who have been um, victims of acid attacks or have been stabbed um, and it's very hard to identify one cause as being this is the reason why or that's the reason why mm -hmm. and I know the police are doing a lot to try to clamp down on you know collecting knives and and trying to address the issue in the criminal sense um, but I think there's a real need for the community to be involved as well and I think the community can play a really important role in looking after people and and taking care of people and I think that's one area that um, that we need more of does it do, do you fear like when you go out in the evening like something might happen to you do you, do you have this kind of reservation well I think the, these um, media stories are so powerful because they f they they make it seem which it is it's tragic for everyone that it affects but it seems so real because we can watch the videos we can see things happening as they happen and i think it does create a lot of fear i know you know i think being out at night or any time walking around you could start to think about what's happened to other people and it can affect people and i i think a lot of people we do live in fear of each other we yeah. see someone across the street or down the road coming toward us and we think you know who are they why are, you know and i think this this kind of climate of being afraid, it, it, it's a really negative thing. It builds suspicion of each other when really we often have nothing to be suspicious mm. about. If I could ask Wendy, Wendy, you've been working with young people, you know, like the mindset they have, mm. you know, like carrying a knife, they, they carry it because they're frightened if someone might get attacked him. So he's keeping it for maybe thinking um, it's for my safety, but he, if you have one, you're going to use it. Yeah. And it is a big increase as well in, in, mm. in the community. Mm. Um, why do you think they feel like that? I think um, they feel like that because they feel they, have a, they have need to protect themselves. But I think part of the problem is, is that we are not communicating well enough. We're not talking to each other enough to understand each other's point of view and where we're coming from. So we've, we're suspicious and we live in fear of one another rather than trying to get to know each other and work Are, are you saying this is a generation, generational gap? Are you saying... Yeah. I, I think there is a generational gap uh, and I think uh, our young people and uh, you know they do well at schools and they're mixing well at s in some of, the, of our secondary schools um, but some of our secondary schools are quite they're limited to you know different cultures um, and they're not mixing well um, so we are quite se separate in our communities. So as a youth worker what would you think what do you think we should do as a, a community activist yeah. And people are watching, most of them are 
I'm sure they're active people too. What do you think we should do to break that down, to engage with young people, especially now, summertime, is a lot of people that don't have yeah. a lot of time, they've got nothing to do. Yeah. Um, well, we've been, I've helped recently on the Ramadan project, which has been a great example of trying to get, to, it's given us permission to talk to young people that we wouldn't necessarily talk to. Um, so we had some great conversations on that. And um, there's, there's our youth centre, there's our local youth centre that's open and that's running. Um, we'd like to see more hours, but um, it's running and we've got some really great youth workers who are on our estate. So they're trying to change and trying to make a difference for young people. If I could ask you, th in the same time actually, a lot of places are actually closing down as well. A lot hmm. of uh, youth clubs that don't have mm. enough money, it's closing down. Um, where do the young people go? Where, they go? They don't know where to go anymore. They, they don't have places to go or they could hang out in the park but then you, they, they're at risk. If they hang out in large groups it could cause people to suspect they're up to no good when actually they might just be hanging out in yeah. a group because they have nowhere else to go. But yeah, so a park is probably the only way but if the weather is doing what it did today that's no good for them because it's, it's raining. Um, why would they want to hang out in the park? Um, and there are lots of different people who hang in that park that they necessarily don't want to be hanging out with either, actually, unfortunately, these Do days. Do you feel the same as Wendy said? It's a generational gap now, like we don't speak to each other, we don't say hello in the morning, or the young ones that don't communicate with the oldest? I think the there is... is I think there potentially is less respect um, than... I'm just thinking about even... So I used to be a teacher, and my parents growing up in school um, they wouldn't have even thought to speak back to the teacher, whereas that's happening in schools now as we're teaching. You have to really work hard to gain the respect of your students. Um, and I think Sounds there is a... Like the 80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, then, but then I'm thinking, like, and also, actually, but even, like, the, as we move for jobs more, as we become more mobile across, not just locally and nationally, but globally, families are more split up. So you, you're not living in each other. So you don't have in the house or next door your granny and your parents and your brother and sister, which used to happen, you know, because I, for instance, my brother lives in the southwest of the UK. My parents live that way as well. Um, so we're geographically, we're not in the same space. Whereas growing up, my 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 parents lived in the same town yeah. as my as their parents i remember you know i had a, in my show i had a um a man actually his son marley remember the he stabbed yeah, he and he died yeah. in the hands of uh, his mother actually yeah and um and he was in my show actually and he, he re I really felt it you know like you see something in the social media that's one thing when you see yeah, when you speak to somebody directly and he's saying, whatever happened has happened. I don't want this to happen again to anyone else. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And we can see on the run, actually, it's happening. You know, it's the same day, three, four places happen in the same mm. day. Is yeah. happening. And every time, I think, it's for young people, they're in the corner, they're probably having chips or just shouting and screaming or probably listening to music. We get the idea, and I get the frightening as well, well or should I go in this way, or shall I change the road, or shall mm -hmm. I take the different turns? Mm -hmm. So can you imagine probably a lot of old people, mm -hmm. and how do they feel? Yeah. So what would be your advice to young people if they are in the corner, boys, I'm saying? They must be innocent. They all can't be bad. So yeah. what do we say yeah. to them? Or how do we engage and explain to them, look, there's nothing wrong with you standing there, but people are thinking something else. Yeah, well, this is exactly what, what helped um, us with um, some, some friends uh, from local mosques and churches to start the Ramadan Youth mm. Project because it was a concern of older residents who were mostly um, single women who were living on their own. And in the park next to where their houses were, there were groups of young people who were, who were hanging out. Mm. And most of them weren't causing any trouble, but there was this sort of fear of can they speak to each other or if they if the young people were making noise could the old people talk to them and tell the, ask them to be quiet or would they then be afraid that they were going to attack them or you know there was this this kind yeah. of sense of fear so how did it take you when you went there as a youth worker nighttime yeah. evening everyone going to pray 
Yeah, yeah. And you went to them. They probably think, oh my God, well, are, you, are you a policeman or whatever you are? <laughs> yes, I mean, how, did yes, they, yeah. how did it react? Yeah, yeah so, so with the same with, the, with the, the kind of older people, we actually went with them to meet with um, people in the mosque and we talked about the challenges that we were facing and we all agreed together to try to do something. And the best thing to do is usually just to go and talk to people. So that's what we decided to do was just take regular time to spend time with young people and get to know them and build relationships with them so that we could talk to them not just as a group of young people, but as people whose names that we knew yeah. and people that we could mm. build relationships with and begin to trust mm. and have trust both ways. And I think that's, that's what makes the difference. And I know always the first time, I remember the first time I went to a group of young people, um, I'd only moved to the country very recently and there were a group of about 20 young people all standing around and I wanted to go talk to them. And I was so like, scared at the beginning they looked really tough you know and like I don't know what they were gonna say and then as soon as we started talking they were really friendly yeah. and we had a great chat about um, all kinds of subjects just you know football and politics and everything and it was just a really nice time and I think it was about it's about going to people and and meeting with them where they are mm -hmm. rather than expecting them to come to us mm -hmm. um, and it's good to have youth clubs and places for people to come to, but I think also we have to be willing to go out and yeah. meet people where they are. And I know that's, you know, that, that seems to make a difference, I think. Yeah. I mean, the effort you made us, that's, it's really uh, um, worth of taking it. Uh, 20 people are there, you went for it, and it worked for you. A lot of young people, do you think we understand our young people, the, what they need, what they want from us, the expectation, all this, as their mm -hmm. parents and uncles, and do you think we understand mm -hmm. them well? Do, well, because you, you live in Shadwell, you live yeah, in a where, yeah. um, <laughs> Shadwell, you live in a mixed area, really mixed yeah, area. Yeah, Do you think yeah. that, because yeah, well, for us it's a third generation. I think, yeah, I mean, we don't, I mean, I, no, I don't think we do. I mean, I think we can only make assumptions based on what we know or what we yeah. read on, in the media or watch on TV, unless we actually talk to people and talk to them regularly, we can't know what's going on in their lives. And I think we don't know how how much, uh, how maybe in some ways afraid young people are at the moment because of what's going on in the community and mm -hmm. not being able to, well, as we talk to them about it, then we can almost think that, that we're, we're afraid and they're not, but actually a lot of them are very afraid as well with, with what's yeah, going on. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I mean, I know in Stepney where, where um, Wendy and Anne-Marie work, you do have a lot of similar. Yeah, and I think we, we don't fully understand because we're not teenagers, but I think we can try and we can listen um, to, to try and bridge that gap in our understanding so that we can you know, help and put the right resources in and uh, try and make a difference and make things better for them. Do, do you feel that um, some people will say that this is a lost generation, we don't know where they are, where they go, they go out in the morning, they come at home at night and he's out of touch. Do you, do, you, do you feel like that we lost a generation? Wow, that's, yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> that's I mean, yeah, maybe for some, for some people, but I think it's, there's, so, there's also so many young people who are doing really amazing work yeah. in their schools and their communities, really reaching out. I know it, there's a youth project just down the road from me where we have young people who meet with older residents in a youth club and they they help them set up their smartphones and um, help them send emails so they kind of teach about technology and the older people talk to young people about the history of the community what it was like growing up in the east end when they were young and and the young a lot of young people are taking initiatives like this to be involved so yeah. so i think if we focus only on the negative then it will look like everything's negative but we have to look at both the negative and the positive together definitely yeah. if i could ask yeah. wendy to tell us about your salvation army that you guys are doing amazing stuff around the globe actually yeah so the salvation army is in 128 countries yeah. um and yes we're a global movement and uh, there's a variety of things that the salvation army do um from running homeless projects which lots of people would have heard about um to running church and supporting local communities wherever we find ourselves in the context, um, in the right context, to the way we need to serve those people. Yeah. So is it more like a charity work or is it more like a community work? What do you cover mostly? Um, all. Everything. So we are a charity, we do community work, social work, and we are a church. Brilliant. All in one. <laughs> <laughs> and beautiful foods as well. Yes. Remember yes. that. <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs>
Um, if I could come to you, yeah. um, we were talking about a lot of young people, like they have issues like mm. drinking, stabbing, all that stuff. But they do amazing stuff as well. You know, they, these are, uh, I met this young man last week actually. He, he's only 19 and he goes out and gives foods to homeless people. Yeah. Four times a day. It's mm, amazing. But four times, sorry, not four times a week. Yeah. I amazing. found that really interesting. Yeah. Um, that's in Camden as well, around mm. where you were, mm. uh, you're based in. Um, other people I find is really amazing. They're doing really good in education. They've been really good in other, other sectors as well. So how do we balance that approach? Like uh, Jonathan said, we just can't be focusing on negative. That they do other amazing stuff as well. How do we balance it? I think we have to remember that, that we have the positive because there is, it, I would look at the news and a lot of the news is negative. Mm. Um, there's sometimes when I've looked at the news and gone, the cost, the, the, I would really like just one article to be positive, please. And that's just my individual response. But I know, like you were talking about that gentleman, you've been talking about that young man. I've got a friend who um, was looking at his college and he was, we, we talk about this fair trade thing, but, but we don't do anything about it. And he initially went to his college management and didn't get much further. So he said, right, I'm setting up a fair trade cafe. And he did it. Um, and it's, so it's like not only just speaking about I would like, it's finding some way to use your skills, your time, your talents, because everybody's got that, everybody's got skills and time talents, to work out how you can reach your neighbours. But do you feel like, um, okay, first in negative sense, yeah. like, do you think as a community activist and as a community we are not engaging? Do you feel we are a part? We don't say hello in the morning, we don't no. say salam, we don't say any mm. of these things anymore. So, I, I live right in King's Cross. <laughs> um, there are days actually where I don't hear, because it's a very touristy area, there are days actually where I, uh, I don't hear English, which is the only language unfortunately that I speak. Um, but if I weren't actually, I can hear lots of other languages going on and it's beautiful. But actually then I feel isolated because I'm there going, actually, can I actually even communicate with you? Um, it's a little thought, and that, that, then that thought of, or well, who do I communicate with? Um, where I used to have my base uh, of work was in amongst hotels. So my next door neighbours were hotels. So you've got very transient community, that people change all the time. So you think a little bit about effort, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> but actually it's like, who do you connect with? Because they might be different tomorrow. Yeah, that's another um, thing. So <laughs> Would you approach a, a group of people just to go, okay, I'm going to spend my day, I'm going to go and talk to them. Would you do that? I like would. Like Jonathan, he does. Um, <laughs> I, I would because I'm built like that. <laughs> that that's who I am. I, yes. I would talk to a group of people. I would approach it with an, an element of what are they going to be like. <laughs> um, but like Johnson, actually, I've met a group of people in the park and started chatting with them and you hear their names that's really important and to remember their names actually because once somebody says your name back that's just amazing that somebody's remembered your name it because that's that's the one thing that you own actually it makes some of you so remembering names and finding out who they are and their interests um, and this particular community that I remember walking up to I used to go out with with a colleague actually this was work but um, somebody had died and this community weren't allowed to go to the funeral and they were grieving and needing that space and we were able in that park where they met to have a bit of a memorial service and it was beautiful but it was I wouldn't have known that had I not started that yeah. conversation if I'd not gone into relationship with them and met them Bless you, man. Bless yeah. you. If I could come to Jonathan again, um, you've been to Palestine, you've been to other places, part of the Arab world. Mm. How do you see the young people in that part of the world? And um, how do they uh, connect with them? Yeah, that's well. It's good, good. If you can learn something yeah. and bring it here, it would be very interesting. Yeah. So I, I taught for four years in uh, universities in the West Bank, in the Palestinian territories, and also in Lebanon. And my first experience was teaching in, in the West Bank, and all of my students were Palestinian. Um, and it was 
yeah, it, it was amazing to me how important community was to people in that mm -hmm. in that environment. Um, particularly because, as you know, the situation in Palestine and Israel with the conflict, the lives of people there have, are very difficult. And and I would often wonder, like, how do my students keep going? You know, how can they keep studying with all the pressures that they're under, which is so, so much more than pressures that, you know, we have here, Definitely. where we know a bit more often about what, what we're going to experience in life, but then they just could never tell from day to day if they'd be able to get to university or they'd be sent home, if they were allowed to leave their homes. Um, you know, there was just you know, a lot of military presence. It was really difficult. And when I saw then how strong the community was, that people really looked after each other and knew, knew each other and, and took care of each other. And that's really what seemed to make them able to be able to survive in a difficult situation. Um, when you say community, are you talking about the whole village? Are you talking about the uh, the family structure? Well, both the family. I mean, there's the family and extended family, but also in the in the okay. village, you know. And even though the university students were from all over the area, they weren't just from the area. Everyone kind of knew a bit about who other people were. You know, if someone was missing, we'd kind of go out to try to find them, and and um, and people just. Uh, really cared for each other and that also happened with the religious groups as well because there were a lot of Muslims and Christians in that part of the West Bank and there was a lot of people just looking after each other um, We had one time a church that was being repaired um, Because it had been damaged and we had a lot of uh, Muslim students from the university who went to help uh, paint and repair the church wow. um, And then we had uh, Christian students who went to visit the mosque and learn more about uh, about Islam. So there was a really good, you know, interaction between We don't get to hear this at all, do we? We don't get to yes. hear this at all, honestly. It's amazing. And that's yeah, in yeah. Palestine as well. I mean, a place where, yeah. like you said before, it's more like the hell place. You know, like it's a really difficult place yeah. and they're doing mm. that. Oh my God, it's amazing. Yeah, and I think we don't, you don't, again, you don't always see that on TV. You can't always no. see what's happening, but mm. there's so much happening at the community level that, you know, even when people have a fight or an argument, a lot of times there aren't good enough police or courts to deal with it so the community has to step in and try to resolve it because they don't want it to get worse and so people really work together in that way and uh, it's really inspiring when you see it. That's actually what made me really believe in doing community work um, here in London was because I saw how important it I'm was. I'm going to come to you ask there. you how we can do it here too. Yeah. So I'm going to say advice. If I can come to Wendy, Wendy do you feel that we value our young people? Do you think we respect them as we're supposed to do? I think, yeah, we, we are, well, I can only talk about myself, but I... As, as a community. As a community. Then, and you, of course. You yeah. guys are, you guys are community well, champions. Yeah, I course. think we are. I think we are trying to work with them. There are some great young people around, you know, and I do think they get a really bad press. I think we've, we've created the, this um, image of young people that's not necessarily true, you know, and we've got some great peop young people around in our community who really want to make a positive difference. And, uh, you know, I, I just think about the area I live and I, in my church I've got some young 20-somethings that are really making a difference to the place they live, to the other young people's lives. Um, and they're really investing in the future of other young people. So, in, in your activity, do you get Asian kids into it? Because it's a mixed area. Do you get enough Asian people or no. vice versa? Like, if, you, if it's a youth club, uh, uh, like a corner ones, mm. is it mixed? Uh, unfortunately not. No. We I, know. I, I feel that same as well, you know that. Yeah. I really feel that. How do we mix it? What can we do to mix it? Honestly, if, if we can't mix it, they will never learn. They yeah. will never learn. But I think yeah, of, um, so I think of the acts of kindness uh, mm. days that we have where you do the gardening project, and I can't remember his name, but there's a gentleman who comes um, from, from your group, but there's, we, we join together, and he brings his son and his friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah he and, does. And, I'm think, and, and that is modelling to his son and his friend how to come into community, and, and it, it is beautiful, and they, the son wants to come as well, which is like, he, he's apparently excited when that comes around again. So, yeah, I think it is that kind of, but that is the father very much modelling to his son. This this is how yeah. it should be, um, yeah. and so that's a really beautiful way of community engagement mm. at that point. So I think it takes lots of that happening in multiples for people to get across different cultures 
Yeah. Um, so maybe um, as a youth worker, I think you've got to engage with another youth worker who's crossed the other side. Like, how come you guys have done mix? How come we're not mixing? We need yeah, to yeah. exchange we it. To I mean, it somehow. Yeah. It's been for too long, honestly. Especially yeah. this is an amazing place to live. Yeah. And if they stay in the ghettos, they're always going to be like that. Because yeah. they don't know. They're not mixed. They're not learning. No. That is, that no. is uh, uh, important. So we don't have much time. We're going to go for a break after a minute. So before we go for a break, I'm going to ask... Jonathan, quickly, in Plasta and other places, do they have yeah. a youth club? Do they have youth workers? I don't know, because I haven't been there. Yeah, that's what. Um, yeah, I think um, probably it depends on where you are. I mean, the cities have more services like that, would have youth clubs. Um, probably more, more so in Lebanon, I think. They have sort of youth groups where people, where young people will get together and do activities, summer camps, you know, those, those kind of things. Um, but um, I think... Yeah, so I, I mean, the short, the short answer is yes, I think it's organized a bit differently um, and things are done much more in families, I think, than just yeah. in smaller individual groups. So you don't just have like something for older people and something for younger people. You have more things that are for the whole community and it gets people involved across generations. What do they do different than here? Well, that's, yeah. I mean, I think the, the society is structured a bit more around families. Okay. So families do more things together I think uh, maybe than than we have here, and families are bigger, you know, uncles and aunts and cousins and more extended families. Um, but but I think but also I think in terms of cross community, there's some really good work where you have youth groups that try to bring together uh, young people from different religious backgrounds, so Christians and Muslims and and Jews to some extent, and also in in other other groups. So like in Lebanon, there's a lot of Sunni and Shia and Druze and Alawi and a lot of different groups and to try to get them to spend time together, mm -hmm. similar to what we want to do here. So I think it's a challenge anywhere in the world is how to get different groups together yeah. and, and building trust mm -hmm. and relationships. Beautiful. I'm going to go for a break. Mm -hmm. Dear brothers and sisters, I'm going to go for a small break now. And after the break, we'll talk about some solutions. We talked about a lot of negative, but these are there. So we wanted to get your attention. And then we're going to talk about how do we build a bridge and I'll see you after the break, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Dear viewers, welcome back. Alhamdulillah, we're back again and we were talking about young people and engagement. Now we're going to talk, we're talk about some solutions. So if you want to call in, you're free to call in and share your views, definitely. Um, I'm going to ask uh, straight to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you were involved with the tower. Mm. It really tragedy happened. I think 79 people died so far. We got mm. maybe more. Maybe, maybe more. more. Please tell us what happened that night because you got involved around the same night mm. later. So the Salvation Army has uh, an emergency response vehicle which f is uh, paged by the London Fire Brigade in this area. It's actually a nationwide thing, but it's paged by it's the London Fire Brigade. So when did you find out Greenfield Tower got fired? I got a phone call from Carl Gray, who, who, runs, who has the pager, saying at two o'clock in the morning, saying there is a fire. This is the address. And uh, he said, and there are 40 engines on the fire, which means there are 40, fire, uh, 40 engines already there. It went up to 60. Um, and you know it's a big fire <laughs> at this point. You don't know what. Um, now, our vehicle comes from Shoreditch. Um, it's parked in the fire station at Shoreditch. So he came and picked me up in King's Cross, and then we drove towards not far off the A4, which is where the tower is. And so you can see it as you approach. Um, and, and, and you can't quite believe that it's, that it's here in London. <laughs> In what was your first reaction when you saw that? You, you, we actually, because you cope in different ways, and, and we talked about, like, it was almost like you were in a film, or they'd set up kind of, it wasn't quite real that this thing was happening, because it was, it, it was very much on fire. It, you, we're talking about three o'clock by this point, but it really had, had been only alight for a couple of hours by then, and it was still catching um, in different places. And so you just... I, I don't think you actually engage with the true horror of it at that point, actually, because you, you can't. Your, your brain is not catching up with you. Mm -hmm. um, you. 
And, and I've been on this emergency vehicle for a number of times over the last four, four years. And so you go into, what do I need to do to set this vehicle up for the quickest point to be able to feed the emergency crew? So we don't just feed the firemen, but we will feed any emergency crew plus anybody else that they feel that needs food. Because a fireman will burn 3,000 calories in half an hour at point of fire. So they need food. So we get there as quickly as possible, setting up the tea, the coffee, and then chocolate. Did you get to see that people are screaming through the window and saying, save me? And we could see, I, a, we could see on the video. Yeah. Or people are throwing the babies or someone jumping. Th we weren't quite that close. Um, we were, and, and there was a tree. And I, I, it sounds quite horrible, but I was quite thankful for the tree. <laughs> because most of the time I couldn't see. We did see at one point, there was a lady called Fatima who's been shown with um, Prince William having a, a hug. There's a, there's a photo since then and she'd lost, I believe it's her son. And, um, and I heard, saw her run forward and with her, I, a, a female relative, just scream together. You know, at that point where you're like, her, the first family, the family centre was moved away at this Point, not long after and at some point I did feed um, the fire crew couldn't get away from the front of the tower where they were going in because there was just so much need um, but they were still they were, were very hungry and again I didn't really engage in my head as to what I was going to see but I said oh I'll help you and I took around a crate of drinks and um, a box of chocolates because um, at that point is calories um, that they need and sugar and we go around and there's a picture that's been published in the metro of some fire crew looking completely hopeless mm. and completely tired and completely mm. done in and um, I took round between because I did two trips once with the fire crew and once with the police so we ended up taking what five time was that? what time was it this is about half four I think and we take around five crates of of drinks and, and chocolate bars and everybody had one of. So that's how many people were looking wow. like that. It wasn't 30 in the metro, it was that many. And there were emergency stretchers and the police were ready with their balaclavas and their riot shields being used as protection actually. So they were going in between two firemen and apparently they were raising their riot shields to, so that if anything fell they would protect the fire crew. So it was a very collaborative event, if you like, but at this point I can see the whole tower. I mean, it was so sad, like some of the families actually calling them and saying, please mm. pray for us, we're going to die. Yeah. One of the family actually had a mother and father was really old and three kids there. They could have gone, but they said, no, we're going to stay with you. Right? And they actually went to a bathroom and then... Uh, um, People think still missing people mm. uh, could, could be a lot more. Yeah. Certainly could be a lot more. And they're frightening that we're never going to know the truth. Uh, no, we, I don't know, but I also recognize I've heard again on the news. But it's but difficult to find the truth anyway. People. Everything's gone. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah. we have to say everyone done a good job, please. Yeah. And they, they done their best, honestly. And it was. Only time I realized the community, you know, coming together. Oh, I haven't seen amazing. it before like that. Amazing. I mean, my so yes, horrendous um, images that I experienced. But actually, on the way back, so I delivered. So I so I'd gone with the police background the second time round, and on the way back, I'm walking back, and the local church is just beyond the cordon that had been set up. But there were Muslim brothers and sisters working there mm. and the church were working so hard together and they were literally finding whatever they had at that point because at this point there's not donations from lots of different places but they had found whatever they had mm. and they were desperate to give me something and so they had this box of water, um, bottled water, which is precious actually, you need bottled water and I was able to take that from them. But it was that point where you were like, they were desperate to help and it was just that real I want to help I want to be in community and mm. yeah it was just so lovely actually to see that was one of my uh, in those situations you need something to hold on to that's good definitely you, yeah and and it's, it's those kind of memories that actually enabled me and others to keep going actually it's those mm. points of yeah 
Love. If I could yeah. ask Jonathan, I don't know if you know, you, you, I'm sure you were here. Were you here or were you outside? The um, yeah, I was, I, was, I was here. Yeah. You was here. A lot of um, big, big charity came out like Muslim Aid, Islamic mm. Belief, Al Khair yeah. Foundation, which is we involved. Yeah, yeah. In the morning, by 10 o'clock probably, and, and, blah, blah, and then I called in and said, what are we doing about it? And within, within five minutes, they said, well, we're going to put 100,000 pounds in for them and take mm. this and take that. And I, I really felt good in one sense of like, that people are coming together. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they're trying to sort, sort it out themselves. Because mm. nearly, really, five million mm. pounds from the community coming yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Honestly, mm. it's amazing. Mm. And after that, something happened in Finsbury Park, uh, or oh, the mosque. Yeah. I don't know if That's you noticed right. that, if you could want to share that part. Mm. That was another part where something happened and everybody came together with the flowers and food. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I wasn't there um, for the, some of the, the things that happened afterward. Some friends I know that were there that said, yeah, you know, that the day after there were you know, people coming to give flowers, there, were, there was a, a kind of memorial um, support mm -hmm. sort of service the, the day after, which I had some friends who went to, and there were a few hundred people there from all different communities just saying, you know, we, we need to stand together in this and we're not going to let people divide our communities. And I think when people recognize, we recognize that it's a real crisis, then people are really mm -hmm good at coming together and, and supporting each other. And that's, uh, we had young people that we were working with in Tower Hamlets who were going over to mm. um, Grenfell Tower to help out, um, even though they were fasting and, you know, mm. having, you know, doing a lot, they were still going to help out and other people going up to Finsbury Park and everyone was, people were all really working together and that's. We get to see this when it's something happens. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's, but can we not continue to support this kind of stuff? I mean. Are we waiting for something to happen and then come together? Or I mean, it's a sad. It happened. It's, yeah. it's a beautiful thing happened to me. But then, yeah. everyone gone their own way. Why do you think that happens? Well, I, I think it's it's a natural reaction that when we see a crisis that we want to help. But I think maybe people find it difficult in daily life to know what we can do mm. in this sort of just when things seem seem normal. And we were talking about this before about how even very simple very simple small acts make a big difference. Yeah. Like just saying hello to someone on the street um, when we see them you know, going out the same corridor from our building, having, sharing, sharing a cup of tea with a neighbor, um, those kind of things. And when do you have a couple of examples of that? Yeah, yeah I mean, it suits Andy because what, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. what she does is, I mean, uh, kind of act of kindness is, is something regular. That's, that's mm. the beauty of it. You know, yeah. once in a month you get together. Yeah. If you could share the ideas why we started it, yeah. you started it, and then. Um, yeah. Well, I think these atrocities remind us of our humanity. And that's, the, that's what we're trying to do every month, is to remind each other of our humanity and bring us together. So we started, I think it's nearly a year ago, actually, um, when we realised we'd been in our area for about a year and we realised that we've got quite a lot of isolated, lonely, elderly people who have these small back gardens that needed help. They couldn't do it on their own. And uh, we also realised that we had a group of Christians that were willing to do something and a group of Muslim guys that wanted to connect with the Christians and we wanted to connect with the Muslims. And it was like, how can we talk about faith but put that into a practical action to make a difference for our community. So working together on something. And uh, we've, we have breakfast together, which is always good. We share that on a, a Sunday morning. And then we go out into our community in small groups that are all pre-planned of where we're going. And we have transformed those gardens. But not only for those people, we've also noticed that the people who live in the flats above, come, they come down, they bring cups of tea to us. That's great. They've started to notice that where they're looking out now is improving. So, yeah, it's, it's a project that we've, together, we've made a difference for the community. How do you get the Muslim guys involved? Well. Like, we said, like we said before, <laughs> in, 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 in the youth club, you want, it's only, it's like your style and master. How do you get these guys involved? It's month after month, it's quite a year yeah. now, it's amazing. Well, we've got a good friend called Ishak. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. uh, and that link is really important because I think it's really important that people know what they're being invited to. Mm. And uh, we're up front of the fact that we're doing this because of our faith. We're sharing something of what God means to us. 
by loving our neighbours and taking care of the people. But also, when we're doing that, we're actually talking about what is it like to be a Muslim? What is it like to fast? What is it like to celebrate Eid and, and Ramadan together? So we're learning. So we're getting to know not only the person we're doing the work for, who is, you know, it's their garden, it's their space, and we're sharing with them, but we're also sharing with each other about faith. So it works in so many levels. It's beautiful. What can we do different? Like, I know the men are getting involved, and uh, yeah. do you think we could do something different for as a community yes. or families or something like that? I know it's difficult, to be yeah. honest. It's totally culturally different, yeah. but we can try. It is, it is difficult. Um, we really, you know, we've encouraged our own children to get involved. So I've got a son who's 15. And uh, that's not easy when you've got teenagers, but we want them to be part of it. We want them to understand the community they live in. Um, and we've got a 20 year old daughter who's at university and she comes home and she hasn't got a clue about gardening, but it, she wants to love her neighbor. She wants that's to be great. part of that. Um, so we would love to see more women getting involved. Um, I love having conversation with people. So I would love to see more women getting involved in the project. And um, Bring your family. Come and share with us as yeah, families. I together. think you're missing someone. He, he might complain. Oh, Ian. and Ian. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he's kind of he sorts all the project out. So you know, yes, we want to engage with people. We want to talk. And people of no faith. We also, you know, would welcome people who have no faith at all to come and sit down and share breakfast and work with us. That would be great. If I could go across again to Jonathan. Um, you guys done similar things before, mm. like when um, Nick Cook was here and you went for trips and you also done um, street cleaning and yeah, with, other with stuff. You also. So if you could <laughs> also touch on that, otherwise he, Nick is watching, he will say you haven't spoken about me. Well, I think, there's, there's, I think there's so many things we can work together on. It's more just having the willingness and the yeah. desire to get involved and then whatever things, whatever opportunities come up, we can we can participate in and and I think that yeah it's a kind of small things like you said we've we've done street cleaning a few times um mm -hmm. where um the point is not just to it's not necessarily that the streets need need a lot of cleaning I mean it doesn't right. hurt but it's it's more a way to say it, it gives a really visible symbol that we can work together across communities and that visible symbol really mm -hmm. uh, communicates something that's very powerful. That's more than just the act itself. It's it's showing people that we work together, and I think that's that's so important. So, you know, the the the, the cleaning. We've done some retreats together where we go away and talk about what we believe and how we can work together. Um, and uh, and we've done a project like the Ramadan project. Should I say a bit? Please do. About yeah. That? Yeah. So I, I talked a little bit earlier about how we set it up, and for the last five years, we've had a group of people from. Um, local churches in Shadwell and Stepney and Youth Club, um, the Rooted Forum, and, uh, and Darul Ulama Mosque. And we work all together um, in, in trying to uh, take care of young people during evening prayers. And so when people are, people are praying during evening prayers during Ramadan, we have a group of youth workers and volunteers who come out and spend time with young people who, who aren't necessarily inside praying, but who are out. Um, you know, enjoying the time they can eat and just Does that mean you're giving the people are praying inside a piece of time, you pray, we look after your kids, <laughs> babysitting them? It's, well, yeah, I think, yeah, not, not so much no? babysitting, <laughs> okay. but, it's, yeah. but it's more like kind of extending that, because we, what we found is that in the past, some of the residents, they would, they would see there was a lot of more activity during, during evening prayers, especially in the summer, when Ramadan's been in the summer, and they would complain and they would say, well, why isn't the mosque doing yeah. something about it? When the mosque Before I forget, on behalf of Muslims, I want to thank you, because can you imagine, now that's, that's, that's an amazing um, example you have set. Muslims are praying inside, you're actually looking after the whole community outside that they don't get complaints, and they've been looked after. Yeah. And that, that's been happening for a few years now, isn't yes. it? That's a yeah. beautiful example. I mean, now it's, you put us in a spotlight, we should do similar things to yeah. a church or probably other places. Well, I think that's it. We, there are many opportunities that we can work together. And it's, it's just, um, it, I think it, it can be even very small ways like that. It's not very 
the, you know, it's not so much just to go yeah. spend a couple of hours outside on an, on an, on an evening, yeah. but it communicates a lot to the community that we can, that we can work together. What time do you normally finish is? Well, I mean, this, this, late, year, this year, the, yeah, the Tarawi has been between, was between about 11 and 1, more or less. So it was pretty, it's pretty late. Wendy's been out a number of nights, oh, uh, well and Ian done. and other people from Salvation yeah. Army. We've had a good, good group, and people from other, other churches as well. If you could pick up one so. story or example from that group of young people there. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had some. Maybe I'll say a story about one of the residents. So we had, we had a resident who lived right next to the park, which was close to the mosque, and he had been. He lived on the ground floor, and he'd been really bothered by all the groups of young people were hanging around where he lived and when he would hear noise especially at night he was having a hard time sleeping mm. and he would just be calling the police sort of every every couple of days he'd call the police he'd fill out any social behavior reports but nothing was being done so he just got more and more frustrated and was thinking well I'm just gonna move away because I just can't live here it's too hard so when we started the project part of the the goal was to get residents to come out and meet young people so we had uh, he, he came and he was very willing to come out and join us, which was a big step for him to take, but came out and spent a few nights talking to young people and really? getting to know wow. them. And, you know, after that, he said, it's not like all the problems stopped. It's not like everything was quiet and peaceful, but he didn't feel as uh, afraid himself and as bothered. And he felt like he could talk with young people more. And it really created a, a good bridge. And I think that's, that's what, we, what we're trying to do. And also the young people were very friendly once they knew who he was. Oh, yes, OK. And then, they, and then whenever there was a problem, they would listen and talk to him. And um, so I think that's the kind of thing we're wanting to do. Thank you for sharing that. If I could come to you again. Mm -hmm. Greenfield Tower hero you are. Um, <laughs> tell me something about a group of people actually when they went to a hotel or some places they moved to. Uh, you also organized a prayer room for them. So there's in a, in a hotel in London, there is um, in their conference space more is a space in which the families of Grenfell can come and hear about their loved ones. And sometimes that is literally hearing from the coroner that they've identified or potentially identified their loved ones. So it's a very uh, deep space, <laughs> I suppose. Um, they're also talking now about housing and different things. So it's a, it's a place of coming together. Yeah. And they have um, the British Red Cross there. They have crews there, which is a bereavement counseling place. But what they asked the Salvation Army to do was to, to create a multi-faith prayer room or prayer space. Um, and uh, we had the phone call at four o'clock on Wednesday, which was the longest day, I remember this now. And then on Thursday, it had to be set up by 10 o'clock. And I was thinking, oh, um, this is a short time to prepare for something. <laughs> and uh, I knew I was without any um, Muslim uh, artifacts of faith. I didn't have any prayer mats. I didn't have any Qurans. I didn't potentially have your prayer beads, which I would like. Um, and so I thought, oh, who do I know who, who might respond to this? And so I was able to message you and say, have you got or have you got access to? And you very kindly invited me to Iftar, which was beautiful, so I could pick up the things um, and celebrate Iftar as well. And um, then was able to set up this prayer room so that we could have, and we had three rooms. It was very spacious, can I say. Um, so we were able to set up um, a space for um, everybody to come together, but if people wanted to pray in separately, male, female, then they could do that. Um, and I had enough So how did you manage to find that. the Qibla way? Because you're the one setting up. How did you uh, find... So the Qibla, um, Google, Google okay, is the answer. Google was the work, so I was able to Google Qibla, where, the, where to direct, the, the, yeah, to put that on, and I had, I had printed the symbols so I could put that up on the wall. And I made sure that your um, Qurans were up on the highest point in the room and your prayer mats were facing the right way and made sure that washing facilities were nearby. So we'd separate, we just made it sure because I had learned actually from a friend of mine who's an airport chaplain, he'd set up this prayer room and nobody was using it. Um, and and th when he asked, they were like, but there's no washing facilities nearby, so we can't. Mm. And, and so I was like, oh, then I remember this. <laughs> so I will make sure that, yeah, everyone of every faith can access this prayer space because we are all spiritual beings. And so we have, yeah, 
we need that space. Have you met those people like uh, living there or probably came to you and said, thank you for doing that or have I you have a communication with them? Don't, it, they don't live there, they come in, come, they're invited to the space because it's more in the conference room of, of, a, of a hotel, okay. um, conference area of a hotel. Um, but the, um, and I was asked specifically not to come when the families are there so that they have free access so the families become the important focus. Mm. Um, uh, and so I was asked to come either at the beginning or the end. But the people who run the place talk about how it's being used and they talk about how people feel at peace when they're in there. That um, we have some simple things. So there's um, a memorial tree and people can put some prayers on there or their names of their loved one. Um, and actually, which has been surprising for me, I have a box of mixed yarn, um, so bits of wool, all in a bit of a mess in a box and people can start to begin to process where they're at and it's a, it's it's very early days still for them but they they use that as a place of recognizing that it's a lot of things beautiful i'm gonna we're just gonna go for a small break again dear viewers stay with us we're gonna go for a small break inshallah i'll see you after the break wassalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, dear viewers, welcome back. We were talking about community engagement. You could see a lot of the activities are happening in, in especially in Tower Hamlet, some places in Shadville, Stepney, other places. Like Act of Kindness, going and helping the old people in their homes and doing their gardening. And also painting some places, yeah. changing, move things around. Uh, it happens every month. Also, um, Ramadan project was fantastic. You know, Muslims are praying inside and our Christian friends are looking after the their community and, and their kids outside, not to really trouble anyone else. And we also had uh, Nimeri uh, doing a, a prayer place for you know, Muslims. It's amazing. So I think somehow it's our turn, actually. We need to do something too. You know, we all can play a role. I mean, we all are watching and active. You guys are here too, but it just needs to go out and make an effort. Mm -hmm. If I could go back to Wendy, um, I don't know why I will always come back and go to you, <laughs> just to put you in a spotlight. Um, <laughs> Wendy, you've been doing amazing stuff. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not uh, saying because you're here, actually. You make lovely cakes, <laughs> Sundays. You, you yes. don't miss that. And the way you engage with young people, you know, a lot of my friends actually been to you on Sunday, mm. having, you know, mm. they find their home. Honestly, they find their home. Yeah. How do you guys manage that? Do you plan ahead, or like you're gonna be doing this, this or just like a normal thing? Um, there is a lot of planning, and uh, I think we, you know, we just we're driven by wanting to see the best for our community. That's what drives us, and so there is planning into it, and we want to have connections with people. So it's all those things. Okay, personal question: Would you do it even if you're not working for Salvation Army? Would you still do totally. it? Totally. That's to important. Totally, because I live there. I share the common spaces with people. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a compassionate person and I want the best for other people. So whether I was a Christian, whether I'm part of the Salvation Army, I would be there, yes. And I would encourage anyone else to come and be part of that and just come and see. Last year we done a, a, um, a picnic. Yeah. Was it did. last year or a year before? It was a year before, mm. okay. yeah. First time when we went together, actually, we had a lot of families came together. In yeah, that it, was it was beautiful, actually, and they really, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed yeah. it. And um, um, we couldn't do it this year. I don't know why. We probably didn't plan it out. We still could do it. still got time. Mm. Yeah, we are. Um, if you want to do something, can, let's plan something different than we done before to make it better. Mm. What would you do different? Um, Earlier we were talking about street party or just something to bring people together. There are a lot of projects or a lot of things that we could get involved with in the future. Um, you know, whether, whether it's a, some kind of food distribution um, and whether we could look into doing something like that together. Um, or whether it's something more local in our, in our community in Stepney. Yeah, there's lots of things that we could do. Um, any bright ideas from Jordan or <laughs> Palestine or that part of the world um, that really famous for them? Yeah, yeah. Can... Well, I think you. Know, I, I think hospitality is such a good thing, and that's what you know. I think you were saying about 
what Salvation Army does really well is just having open space that people can come in, have breakfast, talk, yeah. or have a cafe that people can chat. And I think, I think having places that people feel welcome and invited to are, are really important. And that's something I've always been impressed about when we have iftars that, that, um, that you invite us to or different groups and people feel so welcome and at home. And I think, I think um, the more opportunities we can, we can do that. I think my dream has always been to have uh, people to be able to have meals with each other, not just to have not just to have a brief conversation, but actually be able to talk on a deeper level. But I know it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to invite someone to your home that you don't know very well. So maybe we can start small with just cups of tea, or you know, meeting uh, you know meeting in a cafe and just talking. But I think building a relationship to where I think to me a m mark of success is that we feel like we're comfortable to invite someone to our home and have a meal with them. And then that's when I feel like you really crossed a, a boundary into feeling at home with someone so that's that would be yeah. that would be a dream for me a lot of young people are watching so this is called youth hour actually it's yeah. for young yeah. people the reason we not, none of us are young in that level <laughs> <laughs> the reason is we need to we we are a, you guys are example to them so this is what they look at look you've done it mm -hmm. and you made the change honestly we i mean can you imagine the activities we you guys do to you know every month Mm. It's amazing that a lot of people are becoming positive. There are a lot of things are changing. Yeah. And if our young people can learn that, that, that would be a, a achievement. Mm. Um, every time I come to you, I don't say I'm married because I think I, I'm making a mistake somewhere. So <laughs> no that's the reason I didn't use your name <laughs> in, in the beginnings as well. Um, when you go out, mm. I know you live in a busy place as well. When you see young people, mm. what would you like to say to them, like to engage with all the people or things we guys do together? I, it's, I think it is about recognizing that each of us have something to give. Even if you, because people think, oh, it's going to be about money. No, it's not about, actually, it's the last thing it's about money. Mm. Actually, it's about using our, our talents. It's about not isolating ourselves, even in their school. So I met with a group of young people a couple of years ago. It happened to be within a church. And my challenge at the end of them was for them to say hello to, the, uh, to someone when they were walking in transition from lesson to lesson. And I said, I'm not asking you to become friends with that person who's isolated, but I'm asking you to say hello to them because that breaks isolation. Mm. And it's a small thing, but it's huge because that person is now not isolated. That person is now not at risk of becoming very vulnerable. Yeah. Well, um, last week, I, don't know, I had a show here actually, last Thursday, yeah. we were talking about depression. Yeah. There are a lot of young people, old people too, are somehow, somewhere, they are depressed. Yeah. Um, because the reason is we, know, we disconnected mm. somewhere. So how do we help young people to get them out of where they are? They're mm. isolated, they probably think mm. they're not worth it anymore. They probably think, no one likes me. Mm. But well, that's not the case. No. So how do we put, get that message to them? Um, I think it takes a lot of courage I, I, to, to do that. But I'm thinking, so last year, I was thinking, I, I work for the Salvation Army, a um, minister within that. I have friends within that. I have friends within my church. How do I engage with other people? Because actually, it's getting a little insular, even for me. Wow. <laughs> Outside the box, that's great. Yeah, yeah. How, how do I do that? And I actually went on a, 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 a media app. So, you know, I'm using the media and there's this app called Meetup. I looked at what interests I have and I found a group that I could meet with. And, and I do, I meet with this group. I happen to knit and to crochet, that's my thing. Um, and I meet with this group of people from about, I think the youngest is 24 all the way up to their 80s. And we meet and we drink coffee and we have cake and, we 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 meet and have fun together, um, which sounds funny over. Do we need an example? Like, do we need a, a a someone that we can look up to as an inspirational person for young people? I'm talking about. Do we do we always need one, or we don't need one? Do you yeah, think I some think people can be a hero himself? But I but think do we, need we a hero? do. I, I'm just thinking about my parents. So my parents, um, their last jobs were working in a news agents. And I know I got a job based on the fact that I was the child of my parents. Um, they actually said this. <laughs> and, um, but 
I actually, if I was going shopping with them, I knew I wouldn't get very far anywhere fast because they knew who was married to who, who was going on holiday, who had had a death in their family, who had, it, they knew everything. So we would walk a few yards and we'd stop and chat to so-and-so and we'd stop and chat and they knew all their names. It's, I have learned how to interact from people from my parents. Amazing. Um, so people are like, oh, who do you look up to? My parents, because they taught me how to interact with people. Um, and the respect that they, they gained actually um, got me a job, but actually it taught me how that everyone is important in the community. So yeah, they, they're my inspiration. They must be very proud of you. They are, which is lovely. I, I get yes. a little embarrassed, but they are. Um, and yeah, we chat regularly, but I remind them that, yeah, also. Jonathan, really, do we need the example of heroes to, it makes it easy probably, but yeah. Yeah. we don't have many heroes though, isn't it? Well, I think, I think we do, but I'm it's talking about maybe community heroes, like yeah. someone just yeah. gives everything for the community. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think I, my experience of being out, so, you know, doing this project in the evenings, I've had more than one occasion, I can think of one in particular, where uh, there would be someone who came out and was late at night and was really drunk and quite aggressive, you know, almost like, you know, getting into fights with people. And I've actually seen young people really get involved and calm that person down and treat, you know, and, and really de-escalate the situation in a way that I couldn't do myself. I mean, young I, I people doing know. that, can you imagine? Yeah, mm. yeah. Beautiful. Like, yeah, 16, 17 year olds and just talk to the person and just calm them down and, and respond. Oh, there's one, one time we had a, a lady this year actually who was really, really drunk and wandered into the mosque and just started wandering around just like talking to people and everyone was like, what's, you know, what's this lady doing here? So we were trying to figure out what to do with her and some young people came and started talking to her and they got her a, got her a bottle of water and we had her sit down and just tried to kind of calm her down and, and it was and offered her a place to sit and I think that was all young people doing that and, and I think that it's there are all kind of small ways that I think people are young people are really acting heroically but we don't see that again mm. we, we're looking for if we always look for big things like someone to you know yeah. save the world or change but actually in very small ways I think young people really are, are yeah. doing amazing stuff yeah. I'm gonna ask you something regarding you doing PhD on uh, religious study uh, Islam and Christianity as well. Yeah, yeah. that is really deep, you know. I'm um, studied really, really deep. And you've been to you've been to the Muslim world, but just to be more practical, mm. how do you see things? Like, do you have a dream that we can come together in some way? Yeah, I mean, I I do, and I think we also do do come together. And that's in the a lot only way we can ways. survive. That's I mean, that's the only yeah. way we can survive. Otherwise, yeah. it's just like we're gonna human killing human. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah. I mean, I think that the great thing about our different religions is that we both have a very strong ethical code that that talks about how we should treat other people. Mm. And um, it's really inspiring when you see someone who really lives that out in their life. Mm. They, they, you know, they they have a strong faith, and that faith encourage you know inspires and challenges them to really to reach out and to treat other people as neighbors even people who are different or in a, in a situation that's difficult. And I think um, I really see that happening and that's what made me want to study about the different religions because I saw so many examples of Christians and Muslims, that's who I was studying, really working together, helping each other. I've been doing research about um, churches and mosques who were helping Syrian refugees in Jordan, in the Middle East, as neighbors. And it's amazing when you see how you have a town that has um, thousands of refugees who've moved in and you see the way the local community works to support them giving mm. them food helping them find uh, work um, just offering all kinds of support and and that is also they're not that all rich the also they're yeah. not that rich that's, yeah. the, that's the beautiful they're not that yeah. rich as well mm. yeah yeah and when you when you see that it really inspires you to say you know that can happen anywhere and it does happen but I think we just have to encourage it to happen more N give us a few names, the imams you met, the famous imams probably in that part of the world. <laughs> well, I, <don't laughs> I mean... Next time you go, you might make you birani because you know what he's I don't want to do it. <laughs> I've, I've been very, I'm very privileged. I was able to, you know, to visit um, Al-Aqsa Mosque in, in Jerusalem, in Al-Quds, um, and, uh, and, you know, uh, the, the mosque in Damascus, the Umayyad Mosque, and met some of the leaders there. 
Um, but it's, it's just, this was before the Syrian civil war when it was a bit, a bit easier to visit. But um, yeah, I, mean, I just think that um, the kind of hospitality, hospitality is such a very strong mm. value in, in the Middle East, a kind of cultural value that everyone has it regardless of their religion. Everyone's very focused on hospitality. And I've been so blessed to experience that in many places in community centers and homes and mosques. And, and it's, yeah, yeah. And it's good to see that here in London as mm. well. Beautiful. Um, if I could, Wendy, a um, lot of calls we get from young parents, actually single parents, or, and, and they are worried about their kids. Mm. Uh, especially the, we've got six holiday, they don't know where they're going to go. There's no, nothing going on a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Some of them are looking for a job, they can't find jobs. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of um, pressures. Mm. What would you say to them? To how to engage with their kids? What, what do they should look for in their kids to uplift them? I think find something. If someone in that position, I'm not if saying everybody is. Yeah. Um, find something that your kid likes doing, and do it with them. You love sleeping, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like my one of my boys, he loves sleeping. Well, my my boy. If I say I sleep with him, it's not enough. <laughs> he likes computer games, and sometimes that means I have to play FIFA, because that's what my boy likes doing. And I have to meet my So son. you play with them? Yeah, I play with them. Sometimes they want to just want to hang out, watch a movie. And getting, building that relationship within your own family is really, really important. So spend time with them. That's the biggest thing you can do for your kids is invest time in them. Some parents probably just see in the negative part of them. Oh, he's, oh, look, you're not doing it right. Oh, you're not clean properly. You know, like you're always just telling them what to do. Yeah. It doesn't help, does it? No, it doesn't always help. You know, <laughs> I have this rule in our house, that, you know, if, their bed, if my son's bedroom's a bit untidy, I say the ceiling looks clean, because the ceiling always looks clean. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so you're always positive. So I'm positive. <laughs> Even in the negative, sorry. <laughs> if it's there to get you into doing it, you can yeah. do it. <laughs> okay. No, no, I think you are functioning so well because I see you guys uh, and that's the beauty of it. That, that's how we are. We function well when we positive, we value, we respect. And in the house, if you don't have that, yeah. if the kids are going in the room, you're in another room and yeah. everyone's doing their own stuff. Yeah. Sometimes I do it. I'll text my wife from room, from, get me a tea and she'll say, <laughs> What are you just call me? What are you doing? What are you texting for? But just just to make her get annoyed yeah. with me, so I do that. <laughs> um, recently, we done a, a dinner for our neighbours. Yeah. You were there. You oh, yourself mm. were there. We missed uh, Jonathan. Yes. And we invited uh, nearly thousands of people. Actually, they didn't turn up on that day. We expected 500 people, but we had uh, probably three and a half, hundred yeah. people. There's a lot of people. Yeah. And the reason was just to share our thoughts. Yeah. People might think, look, oh, you're from the church, you're going to preach. Or you're from the mosque, you're going to preach. That's not the case. Yeah. We're actually sharing our faith. I'm proud of my faith. Mm -hmm. And that's how we should be. Yeah. And they came in and they've been to the mosque. It was amazing, yeah, a buzz going on. And yeah. It's increasing. A lot of other places are doing it as well. Like this weekend, we're doing an exhibition. Mm -hmm. And on the 20th, I'm doing another exhibition in another mosque as well. So actually, people are trying to mingle in and out with their neighbours. Um, what do you think is the best way to engage with your neighbours? Invite them round. Share a cup of tea. Um, this week, I've had a garden party in my garden. And I've invited um, different people to come, including my neighbours. And uh, we just had a really nice afternoon. But I think if we really want to get to know our neighbours, we've got to ask them to come in. We've got to invite each other and, and to share with them, to really get to know who they are. Um, and that might simply be over a cup of tea. Um, so we had this garden party yesterday. Everyone had a nice day. And today, my neighbour said, next time we do this, come to my garden. And it was just that beautiful moment of wanting, she wants to share what her garden looks like. And she wants to invite people into that space. Um, so it's simply get to know who lives next door, get to know the people in your street and share whatever space you've got with each other. Um, and we need to break down some of these barriers that we've got and some, of, and some of the things that we may be worried about or concerned about will disappear as we get to know each other. Um, that's, that's my best bit of advice. 
It sounds easy, but it's, it's not that easy, <laughs> is it? Just, yeah. Um, yeah. I th but if you all tried it, of course, yeah. you, see, you never, never know. Maybe not next door, try another one, yeah. try mm -hmm. another one. And um, it might work. And what we discovered, though, as we invited people to come, that they were delighted to be invited. And what we don't realise is people are waiting. They're waiting for you to say, come, come and see. And we think, we think, if I invite this person, will they come? We have all these worries that people won't come or they won't accept the invitation. And actually, people are just waiting to be invited. We're not neighbours, that's why we're not invited. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Next time. <laughs> Next time, of course. Um, we have only five more minutes. Mm. Uh, I want to hear something from you, because you've been in, in thick of a lot of things, mm. uh, um, especially that tower we're yeah. talking about. If you could pick up one point to oh. share with everybody, that would help. That you learn something from that mm. crisis. It is just how community can come together. And actually, it was in the, it was not, yes, there were some big things going on. There were some structural things going on. So that emergency response vehicle is something that's big, really. It's something that's structurally going on. But actually, in amongst that, we had um, a neighbor make some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because she wanted to do something. I had the best curry ever, I swear. I don't know if I'll ever beat it, actually, at four o'clock in the morning on my second shift. And it was just the most welcome thing. And people are like, oh, actually, I could do that. I could cook a curry, or I could bake a cake, or I could make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Those are... The, but it was the small it's things, actually, the, the most beautiful things that are easier to do, or I say easier to do, or, and actually if you have something in your hands, we've no other agenda than to give, actually. That's quite important, and no other agenda bit, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, than to give and to share with your neighbours. So take some sweets friend or bake a cake or and it, and it was in the food it was in the hospitality I think hospitality that word has been used so many times oh, yeah. I think it's in that giving with no thought of receiving back actually fantastic yeah. but, you've got uh, one minute to, to our okay. viewers the Sorry. last word to our viewers to your last few um, do it take the courage take the step just go out to your neighbor whoever that might be at school or it might be at college, it might be at your work. Take, take some cake into work. Um, take some sweets into work. Do something that you use your time and your talents and just share in community because you might be waiting, but so might somebody else. So yeah. You might be the catalyst of something other. Have a go. Take the courage. Take the plunge. That Brilliant. would be my thing. Wendy, yes. you're with one minute to our viewers and young people are probably watching something for them. Okay, so I've got a dream and um, it's good to have a dream and my dream is to kind of develop a community cafe in Stepney where the whole community is invited, the whole community is welcome and we desperately need those spaces where people can gather together and come together. So that's my dream and um, we're going to keep going until it happens. Brilliant. Is it going to be, are we going to pay for it or are we going to be? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll have good cake, okay? Okay, that's fine. As long as we get some discount, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what friends for, I thought. Um, yeah. Jonathan, um, you've got two minutes to share your thoughts. Yeah. Um, you are a scholar t to us, definitely, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, from the both sides. That's, that's, that's the beauty of it. Not many people do that, I, I know. And please share your thoughts with our young people who are watching. Yeah, yeah. And give them some hope. Honestly, life is yeah. hope. Yeah, I, I um, actually, I, after my experience of living for two years um, in the West Bank, I went to visit an imam that I'd gotten to know quite well in a village, in um, a Palestinian village. And I asked him, you know, as a, um, I'm American and British, so I asked him, you know, as a, as a Westerner, as someone who's not Palestinian and who isn't, you know, is going to live in the West, what can I do to help? Because people always want to know, you know, we see injustice, we see problems in the world and we want to do something about it. And he said, you know, you know, you speak English, you're, you're a Westerner, make a difference in your own community. And if you, if you make a difference in your own community, uh, that's, the, that's the best thing that, that you can do. Um, and let us work on making a difference in our community. And I, I was really inspired by that because I, I think we, there's so much we can do that we don't realize. And 
um, in, in, even in very small ways when we make a better relationship with our neighbor, mm -hmm. that helps to create more peace in the world. And I think that's something that, that all of us can do um, regardless of where we live or where we're from. We all uh, said something from uh, someone in our home. So do you want to say anything to you, someone in your home? Oh. <laughs> well, Don't I'm miss that. <laughs> well, it's, I, I, it's my wife, Diana. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, I have to put you in a spot. No, right. You know, when I, every time what I do is when I get no, young people, funny. when yeah, I get young say people say here, actually, I say, <laughs> there's a challenge for you. I want you to say a live and call your mom and dad, say you love them. Oh, yeah. Mm. And sometimes good. for young people to do that and live and show is mm. difficult for them. But mm. it's, it's, it's the way, that's how you do it. So thanks for your time tonight, and I really Thank enjoyed you, it. Sean. Dear viewers, I'm sure you enjoyed it too. If we said anything wrong, please do forgive us. We're just trying to learn and express our mm -hmm. views, and hope to see you next week. Inshallah, make dua for us, and we make dua for you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.